thanks for joining me. This is Angie at Chicken Scratch, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make three cards and three 3D projects using one sheet of designer series paper. This is the Merry Moments designer series paper. It's featured in our Stampin' Up! catalog and the main catalog. We're using Oh What Fun stamp set and two ink pads, Old Olive and Real Red. Now we're only going to be using some punches today, so I'll go ahead and cover those so that if you want to make these, you can. We're using the two inch circle punch, the uh, wide, extra wide uh, oval punch. We're using the one eighth handheld punch, two and three eighths scallop circle punch, the two and a half inch circle punch, the decorative label punch, and then the large oval. Okay, so I have our template here. If you've seen any of my other uh, One Sheet Wonder videos, this is number three. I've got the number three down here. Um, so this is our first cut. This is gonna be our second. Anyway, this one is a little bit more detailed than the last one, but that's because we're making three cards and three 3D projects. So it's a, that's a total of six projects out of one sheet of designer series paper. Okay, so okay. your first cut on the designer series paper is going to be at five inches. Move this aside. So this piece, when we're all done cutting, is going to measure five by 11. So I'm going to place it over here on the 11. And then we're going to cut one more time. So this is five by 11. This is for our bag. Then this piece right here, let me get the template back out. I want to make sure I'm showing you. So five by 11 is this bag. Then this piece that's left over at the bottom, we're going to cut that down to measure three and three quarters. And that is going to be for one of the cards. Three and three quarters. Okay, so we're going to set this aside. The next cut, we're going to go back to this leftover sheet here, and we're going to cut this um, at six inches. So you want to make sure that you take it from uh, long, from portrait, and turn it into landscape, okay? So we're going to cut this at six inches. Set this piece aside, and then cut this again at six inches. So this is going to measure six by six. This is for our basket, okay? Then this leftover piece here that measures one inches, we're going to cut that at five, and that's going to be for one of the other cards. Now we've got this leftover piece here. You want to make sure that you um, position it in the landscape mode, and what that means is that it's going to be wider up here, and it's going to measure seven inches across. If you put it up here and it only measures six you need to turn it around so that it's over here at the seven. Slide okay. it over to four and a quarter, and we're going to cut, okay? So then slide this over. This is our leftover piece. We're gonna now turn this and cut it at three and three eighths. Let's see, one, two, three. Okay, so that's this piece right here. And, and then we're gonna take this piece, because right now it measures well, it doesn't matter what it measures right now. What we want to do is we want to cut it. So that's that same piece, just the leftover part. And we're going to cut that at three and a quarter by two and a quarter. We're going to take this piece here and we're going to cut this at two and a quarter. And then we're going to cut it at one and a quarter. Again, at one and a quarter. These are going to be for the sides of our box. And then we are left with a piece that measures three. So we're going to cut off a tad. Three by two and a quarter. And this is going to be for card number three. Okay? Now I'm going to show you the template with all the paper on top of it, okay? So we've got this piece here, the two sides of our box, our card, the back of the box, um, this card, wait, let's see, this card, this card, the bag, 
and this one right here, okay? So now we're going to start making our projects. Okay, so we're going to start with card number one. It's the easiest project, and I love it, but it is very simple. But we're left with this one piece of designer series paper, so there wasn't a whole lot you could do with that. I love cards that have a lot of white in them. Okay, so here are the supplies. The base of the card is Whisper White, and it's actually the Thick Whisper White. So it measures eight and a half by five and a half, and I've scored it at four and a quarter. The next layer is five by three. It's also the Thick Whisper White. We've got a four by three piece of regular Whisper White to stamp our image on, and then some silver taffeta. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and attach the strip of Designer Series paper to the front and I'm going to try to place it in the middle just like that. Then I'm going to add it to the card using dimensionals. And I want to put one on each corner because the middle will sink in if you don't place one in the middle. This is one of those cards that I could make a ton really quickly. Okay, so we're just going to center this. Now let's stamp. We're taking the Happy Christmas Real Red Ink. And I'm just going to ink it up and stamp it right in the middle. This is one of those stamp sets that stamps beautifully. We're going to take the two and a half inch circle punch and just cut that out. We're going to place two dimensionals on the back, one at the top and one on the bottom. Place it here on our card. We're going to take the silver taffeta. I cut um, eight inches, which is more than enough. So if you were going to make this card right along with me, if you needed to cut your supplies in advance, eight inches is plenty. And then I'm going to take a glue dot, if I can see it, there we go, and we're just going to attach it right here at the bottom. Now if you want to add a little extra bling, you can take one of our rhinestones, so I'm going to grab that, and I'm just going to place it right up here above the eye. Okay, so there is card one. Isn't it cute? Okay, now moving on to card number two. Okay, so the card base, Thick Whisper White, eight and a half by four and a quarter, scored at four and a quarter. Then the next piece of Thick White measures three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then we've got our white, regular Whisper White for stamping the image, and then our taffeta again. So we're going to repeat the same process. We're going to take our strip that we cut here, place it right in the middle, just like the last card. So it's almost exactly the same. Whoops. Did I do this right? Yeah, I did. Um, except it's just smaller. Same thing. We're going to put dimensionals in all four corners. Now, I seriously thought about making all cards um, for this One Sheet Wonder, but this One Sheet Wonder is actually a repeat of one that I did a year or two ago. It was the One Sheet Wonder Easter class. It was one of my online classes, and I also gave it to my mailing list subscribers for free, I think. One of them was. Anyway, so it is a repeat, but that was Easter, and this is Christmas, so... Same thing, stamp the image in the middle, cut it out with the two and a half inch circle punch. I got to talk in there for a second, I almost messed up. Okay, so now we're going to place dimensionals on here. And I turned it over so I don't remember where's the top and the bottom. And then place it right there in the middle. Isn't that so cute? It's simple, but it's cute. So I'm tying a bow with the silver taffeta. 
I'm so glad we still have we have this in the catalog. The other colors were tired and I still miss them. Okay, same thing again. I'm going to use a glue dot to attach it to the front. And now we're going to take a rhinestone and add it to the eye. And there is card number two. Okay, so now we're moving on to card number three. It's cute, isn't it? Okay, so the supplies here. Now this is a little bit more supplies, but that's okay that one of our cards is ramped up. I was left with this, um, that's not the right piece. Here it is. So I was left with this, what is it, two and a quarter uh, by three piece of designer series paper. So I was like, what can I create with this small piece of designer series paper? So this is actually what I came up with. Hopefully you like it. It did take me a little bit longer than the other cards. <laughs> So I'm going to just place my adhesive on the top there, and I should rewind for just a second. Let me back up. I'm sorry about that. Whisper white, thick whisper white, 11 by 4 and a quarter. I scored it at 5 and a half. That's our card base. Then we've got our real red that measures 4 and a quarter by 2 and 3 quarters. Our old olive measures 4 by 2 and a half. The designer series paper is 3 by 2 and a quarter. And this is, let's see, these two pieces right here are just four by two and they're there for our punches, for these two punches, okay? Now we can go back to this. So before we attach the old olive to the real red, we want to add our cording trim. So what I'm going to do is just, now I'm actually going to, cheat just a little bit. Um, I have discovered that when I try to tie this cording trim um, around a project and then make a bow, I struggle with it. It doesn't, like it flops upside down. So what I'm going to do is just tape it to the back side of the card. with a glue dot. You can use scotch tape if you want. Okay, so see how it is on there? Now I'm going to take my leftover piece and I'm going to just make a cute little bow. And then I'm going to attach it on the front with a glue dot. Whoops, I messed up. Now this video may actually go longer than the allowed 25 minutes. If it does, I may have a part two. So um, if that happens, sorry about that. I, I'm really hoping I can edit it out and, um, and it'll be nice and short, but it might not. Now what I'm going to do is take a pa my paper piercer and a glue dot, kind of wad that up. And I'm going to place it right in the middle of that cording trim and then place my bow exactly where I want it. <laughs> okay, again, take my dimensionals and put one here, one down here, and then a couple at the top. And then we're going to attach it. Now, you might want to go ahead and attach your red here first. I'm just centering it in the middle. And then now we'll add this layer. Okay, so there's that part. Now let's stamp. What we're going to do is cut out this red piece with the decorative label punch. And then now we're using old olive ink. Now let me tell you, this image, if you look here, it says uh, spread a little holiday cheer. That is actually not in the Oh What Fun stamp set. It's in a photopolymer set that's in our photo photopolymer section. It's a couple years old. It is still available and it has all these wonderful uh, tags in here. So I think it's called Christmas Taggables. It is, and it will be on the supply list so you can see the item number if you'd like to order it, but I love it. 
but you don't have to use it. So I will go ahead and show you the basket. This is the basket that we're going to be making in a minute. And I did not use that extra greeting. So if you decide you don't want that stamp set or you don't have it, it's still going to look cute. I just thought that it would be nice if I had a little a little green and a little red on the card. But you don't have to. You can actually just leave Jolly on the front and then put another greeting on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to try to successfully stamp this so that it will fit in the oval punch. So I'm going to stamp Jolly with the um, Old Olive and then spread a little holiday cheer with the Real Red and I'm going to try to stand up. Ah, not bad. Okay, where's my punch? So here's the wide oval punch. Yay, and it fits. Okay, and then now we're going to take a dimensional and add it right on top of the decorative label piece. And I'm just centering it. And then we're actually going to attach it to the card also with a dimensional. Before we do that, we can go ahead and add our rhinestones. I'm going to add one to the jolly right there. And then we're going to add one right there. So I'm adding two to the Y and uh, one to the Jolly. I will tell you though, I um, I joined South Hill this week, and I got my or last week, and I got my little charms. I don't know if you can see this cute little snowman. And when I first made this project, I had that little snowman right in the middle. I wouldn't put it with the rhinestones. I would just put the little snowman without the rhinestones. But isn't that so cute? Oh, I love it. Okay, so now let's add it to the card real quick. Sorry about that lane swerve, but I swear Brooke and I have had the best time playing with these little things. The locket she wore yesterday just had a pig in it. Just a single teeny tiny pig all by his lonesome. <laughs> and we went out to eat last night. Okay, card number three is complete. So now we're ready for our box, and here are the supplies. We've got old olive cardstock that measures eight and a half by five. Make sure you cut that at five. If you cut it at eight and a half or at five and a half, it's going to ruin everything. So eight and a half by five, five by three and nine sixteenths. And then we've got white and red for the stampin', which is four by three. We've got the pom pom trim and the silver sequin and then a metallic clothespin. Okay, and I just realized one of the punches I didn't tell you uh, you needed was the Project Life uh, Corner Punch. Um, I forgot that one earlier. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to take this um, eight and a half by five sheet. We're going to place it in portrait mode first, and we're going to score it at one and two and a half. So one, oh dear, one and two and a half and then we're going to turn it on the landscape side and we're going to repeat that same scoring so one and two and a half and then we want to turn it because we want to do that on both sides so one and two and a half okay now for this one i'm actually going to cut before i um i fold on the score lines so if you look real closely, we've got four boxes here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two blocks there. On this one, I'm going to cut all the way up to that top score line, but I'm only going to remove this section right here. I'm going to repeat that same process over here on the other side. So I'm going to cut all the way to that top score line, remove that section, and then for this one, I'm going to cut up to the top score line, but only remove this bottom section. Okay? So now, if you look at it, this is going to fold up in. See, here's the box. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold it properly and use my bone folder. This is one of those projects that you do want to use your bone folder because you want your box to have nice crisp lines. So we're going to take the large oval punch and we're going to make a 
hole for the handle. And then we're going to take the Project Life Corner Punch and we are going to round those top edges. The bottom doesn't matter because it's actually going to be hidden. Now don't add your designer series paper yet, okay? It may seem like you need to add it now, but you do not. Okay, we can go ahead and add the designer series paper to the box before we assemble it, just not the back panel. So this two and a quarter by one and a quarter piece goes on the side here. And then the same thing for the other side. Move that punch out of the way. And then the panel here can get added. Now I already gave you the measurements, so I'm not repeating them, but the instructions will be on my website with all the measurements and everything, okay? So now to assemble this, what I want to do is actually put my adhesive on this piece right here, okay? So I'm going to take my tear and tape. And I'm going to put a piece here. And here. And let me remember where else am I putting it. Oh, okay. And I'm going to put it on these two panels also. On the back side, okay? So see, it's going to fold in like that. So you can go ahead and do that if you want. It makes it a little bit easier. Okay. Then now these are going to go out just like that. Okay? Just going to rip off the uh, backing. <laughs> I'm going to try. There we go. Okay. And I should have used more adhesive. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm always in a hurry. I'm trying to do a better job of slowing down, but it's not in my nature, actually. I'm one of those people that's always early and it drives people absolutely crazy. Okay, so now this is going to get attached back here. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to just put some tear and tape on this piece. Uh-oh, I think I cut off too much on that. Okay, so I'm just going to peel the backing off the tear and tape. Now, you just want to line this up. So if you want, just line it up at the bottom. Just like that, okay? Now, we want to take that uh, corner punch again, and we want to corner the top of this. I'm going to turn this over, actually, so I can see. Sometimes I don't actually uh, corner it. Now we're going to place the adhesive on it and attach it, and then we're going to have to um, cut the handle out again, but that's okay because we can line up the existing hole um, with our punch. Just like that. Okay, there's our old olive ink. And this time we're using the two inch circle punch. If every image I use could fit in the, in the two, and <laughs> the two and a half, I would be so happy. <laughs> I love using these circle punches. I always have. Okay, so this one's going to get attached with a dimensional. Now, I should have added my rhinestones first, but it's okay. So what we're going to do is put three rhinestones down here at the bottom. And the way I line those up is I actually place the first one at the bottom, and I could have moved it down just a tad, and then I place the one to the right, and using your uh, paper piercer definitely helps. I know some people use tweezers. I, I'm, I've never tried tweezers. I, maybe I will one day. Okay, so now okay. we're going to add it to our circle. And we're going to add another dimensional on the back. Whoops. 
place it on the front of the box. Isn't that so cute? And then now for the um, sequin and the pom-pom, I'm just going to take this little clip and clip it up here at the top. <laughs> just like that. So there is your box. Super cute. Okay, so the supplies for the basket are right here. We're using a um, book ring. I think that's what it's called. We have our cording trim. Um, we're using the 6x6 piece of uh, designer series paper. And let's get out our Simply Scored Scoring tool. Oh, these two pieces measure 4x3. They're just for the punches. Okay, so we're going to score this at two inches on all four sides. I have been making this basket for years, and it actually can be made into a box as well. I think I have several videos on uh, both the box and the bag. Okay, so I'm going to fold it on the score lines. going to do is place it on my stamping mat. I've got myself a ruler and the stylus and I'm going to, if you look at the paper, I'm going to score from this point here to this point here on all four corners. Okay, so I'm just going to score, score. Okay. Um, if you have a surface that you don't want to scratch, or indent whatever with your stylus. You can use this stamping mat. Just don't press too hard is my only advice because you can rip your paper. <laughs> so I'm just pressing lightly and going over it twice instead of once. So that way I can make sure that I get it but I don't rip my cardstock and or my designer series paper in the process. And I'm just folding that up just so I can see where the edge is. I got a, a million lights going in here. Okay, so now I'm just going to fold on those. And look, I did rip it. Okay, so now I'm going to fold those in. I folded them out first because it's a little bit easier. And now I'm folding them in. And we're going to take the... 1 8 hole punch put put two of the peaks together and punch your hole you don't have to do any special lining up because you're just using the little book ring so just try to get it somewhere near the top but not not at the top so much that you're gonna actually rip it then take your book ring and what I like to do is uh, place this side in on that side of the clip and then come over here on this side of the clip I just I've made these for years and years and um, it's always been easier to do it this way of course now I say that and I won't be able to do it <laughs> there we go okay I didn't bring the confetti paper over but you guys have seen how I've done that I have several videos so there's the little basket now let's decorate it same thing, we're using the old olive ink with the Jolly Image. And we're going to cut that out with the extra large oval punch. Let's go ahead and assemble these. So I'm going to attach the image to the decorative label. Again, just centering it. And then let's add our rhinestones. So one on the J and two on the Y. I'm going to take the Stampin' Mat again and I'm just going to make a hole right there for the cording trim. Now you could use your 1 8 punch. Sometimes I can't see that where it's going so I like to use the Stampin' Mat for that. Okay so now we're going to take three pieces. You don't have to use three. You could use two you could use just one I just was trying to do something different and I figured it would be really neat to have all of these just kind of going in different directions I may not even be able to thread it to be honest yeah well let's see did I get all three I did yay 
I sound surprised, don't I? So now I'm just going to just tie a knot, simply a knot. Sometimes simple and easy is the best. Once you add, like somebody asked me, well, what else would you put in here? I always give candy and jewelry, to be honest. Um, yeah, I pretty much give candy and jewelry or quilts. But um, I would either put tissue paper or the crinkle paper. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is just trim those edges. So see how cute that is? And maybe three is too much. To be honest, I used two on this one, so maybe two is plenty. Okay, so now we're making the final project, and it is a little cute little bag, and that is using the last piece of paper, which is the 11 by 5, and now that was actually the first piece we cut, so it's ironic that we're using it last. So we're going to place it here on the Simply Scored scoring tool. And first we're going to place it in portrait mode and we're going to score it at one and a half. Then we're going to place it in landscape and we have a lot uh, to score this time. My little um, scoring tool is missing its feet. If you notice on the bottom there's these little plastic things. I have lost a couple. I've got to find them. Okay, sorry about that lane swerve. So one, four, Five, six, nine, and ten. Now, before we go any further, do not start cutting yet. Um, this is one of those bags that um, you don't cut all of the lines. It'd be okay if you did, but you really don't really, you don't want to. It looks better if you don't. I have messed up before. In fact, I think I did on the um, on the uh, Easter tutorial. Okay, is that all of them? Okay. Nope. Two more. I knew I was missing a couple. Okay, so if you look at this, you have two score lines over here. You have two score lines here. Well, actually three here. Two here, three here, and only one over here. This side over here that only has one, you're going to remove that section right there, okay? And then you can just angle the bottom there and angle the top there. You don't have to, but you can. Now, going back to the bottom here, don't cut that first score line. Skip it and cut this one. Then you're going to cut the next one, and then you're going to skip the middle, and then you're going to cut that one, okay? So see, these pieces are actually going to fold in, okay? Give you a good look at it. So all we're going to do is place adhesive here. And I'm just going to fold this over. Okay, that's going to be the the back of our box because sometimes it's kind of funky looking so this right here is going to be the front of our box but we actually do need adhesive on on both pieces because so normally I say fold that over fold that over it would be helpful if you put a little adhesive on this one and you do want to use stronger adhesive than snail I'm just using that to save myself some time today I know this video is going to be super long and I didn't go through the supplies so I'm sorry about that. Uh, four by three for our images and pom-pom trim and silver taffeta and a clothes pan. I'm going to stamp the image with old olive ink. Cut it out with the two inch circle punch. I'm going to go ahead and add my three rhinestones down here at the bottom. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to cut out a two and three eight scallop circle out of the red card stock. And then we're going to pop this up with a dimensional. 
Okay, come back to your box. So I'm going to take the pom-pom trim, or bag, this is the bag, and I'm just going to clip the bag closed, and then I'm going to tie a bow out of the silver taffeta. I'm going to add it to the clothespin using a glue dot. I love doing that. See? And then we're going to add this with dimensionals. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be generous because the box or the bag bows in the middle. And so if you don't place your uh, dimensionals in the right spot, it's not actually going to attach to the bag. So there's the bag. Okay, so that wraps up the One Sheet Wonder class. If you'd like to place an order for any of these products or download the instruction sheet, head over to my blog. Also, leave a comment on this post. One person is going to win all six projects. I've already assembled them, so it's going to have to go in a priority mailbox. So head over there, leave a comment, and uh, you'll have a week, and we will draw a winner. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye.